In this video, we are going to learn laws of Boolean algebra. In just a previous video, we have understood Boolean algebra in digital electronics and the importance of Boolean algebra in digital electronics. So now in this video, we are going to start with different laws of Boolean algebra. So in Boolean algebra, there is identity law, idempotent law, dominance law, involution or double negation law, negation or complement law, commutative law, associative law, distributive law and absorption law. And there is 10th one but that we'll discuss at the end. So now let's start with the first one, identity law. It is one of the fundamental property that governs the simplification process in Boolean expression. It describes how combining a variable with identity element in an operation leaves the variable unchanged. This law applies for both AND and OR operators. So the first one is a.1 is equal to a. This law states that any variable ended with 1 will result into variable itself. Here, let's see there is AND operation so we can have a and b in output. It is the truth table of AND gate. So our equation is a.1 that means we will consider b is equal to 1. So now let's say if a is equal to 0 then a0 b1 gives 0 that means we have 0 in output. That means we get A in output. Now let's see if we have A is equal to 1. So 1 into 1 gives us 1. So the output will be 1. So that's how we can see that A dot 1 gives us A in all the condition. Now let's see another identity law. A plus 0 is equal to A. So here we have OR gate A plus B. And this is the truth table. So here in place of B we will take 0 only because b is equal to 0. So in case number 1 let's say if a is equal to 0 then 0 plus 0 will get 0 in output and now in place of a if we replace it with 1 then 0 plus 1 will get 1 in output. Here this one. So in both the cases the value of variable will remain unchanged after the operation. Now let's see the next law and that is idempotent law. This law simply means not changed in the value of variable after multiplying by itself. And here we have equation number 1 a dot a is equal to a. So here we have AND gate and it is a truth table for AND gate. So when we say a is equal to 0, 0 into 0 gives us 0 in output. So that is nothing but the a. And if we take a is equal to 1, then 1 into 1 will give us 1 in output. So in both the cases applying the AND operation to the variable with itself it does not change in its value. So it is first an important law and now we will go for the next one that is a plus a is equal to a. So we will take or get for that and it is the truth table. So let's suppose a is equal to 0 then 0 plus 0 gives us 0 in output. So that is true and instead of 0 if we take 1 in input then 1 plus 1 when both the inputs are 1, we will get 1 in output. That means in both the cases applying OR operation to the variable with itself, it does not change its value. And this idempotent law is true for AND and OR operation. Now let's jump to the next law and that is dominance law. This law is another important law in Boolean algebra. This law says when a variable gets combined with the dominant value, the output of operation will be the dominant value itself. Let's say our first equation a dot 0 is equal to 0 and here this 0 is our dominant value. So let's understand this with this AND operation. When we take a is equal to 0, 0 into 0 gives us 0 and in place of 0 if we take a is equal to 1 then 1 into 0 gives us 0. So whether a is equal to 0 or a is equal to 1 will get 0 only in output. This means that the AND operation with 0 always dominates and leads to 0. So it's simply nullifying any other inputs. Now there is another law. A plus 1 gives us 1. This is our OR gate and it is the truth table. Now let's say we'll take A is equal to 0. So 0 plus 1 gives us 1. Here it is. And instead of 0, let's say we'll take A is equal to 1. When both the inputs are 1, it will give 1 in output. That means the OR operation with 1 always dominates the result in 1. 
or simply you can say it will override any input to ensure the outcome is always 1 and all the laws that we have just studied and we are going to study they all helps in circuit reduction fault analysis logical circuit fixation and many more application so to understand this law is very much important for anyone who is dealing with digital electronics so now let's move ahead but before moving ahead if you are enjoying learning from this video, do not forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to this channel. So once you are done with that, now let's move ahead. The next law is involution law. It is also known as the double negation law. And this law is pretty simple to understand. A double bar is equal to A. Now let's understand how this happens. This is our input A. This output is A bar, when A bar is the input, the output is A double bar. And this is the truth table of NOT gate. Now let's say when A is equal to 0, A bar will be 1. And when A bar is 1, A double bar will be 0 again. Similar to A. Now let's say if A is equal to 1, A bar will be 0. And when A bar is 0, A double bar will be 1, which is same as A. That means A double bar will be equal to A and not just A double bar, any even numbers of bar will be equal to A and any odd numbers of bar will be equal to A bar. So this thing you should keep in your mind. So now let's move ahead. The next law is negation or complement law. This law simply states that variable ended with its complement gives us zero. To understand this, let's have a small circuit. It is our A, it is also our A. So here we get A and here we get A bar. So variable ended with its complement will give us 0. Let's see how this happens. So when we take A is equal to 0, A bar will be 1. So 1 into 0 will give us 0. Now in place of A is equal to 0, let's take A is equal to 1. So when A is equal to 1, a bar will be 0. So again 1 into 0 will result in 0. So that's true that when a variable ended with its complement will result into 0. Now let's explore another complement law. A plus A bar will result into 1. So it simply means a variable odd with its complement will result into 1. And to understand this, let's use this circuit. It is our A, so this will be the A. So here we have A and here we have A bar. So now let's say A is equal to 0. So when A is 0, A bar will be 1. So 0 plus 1 will give us 1. Now instead of 0, we'll take A is equal to 1. So when A is equal to 1, A bar will be 0. But still 1 plus 0 will result into 1. So when any variable odd with its complement will result into 1. Now let's jump to the next law and that is commutative law. This law means that the order in which the variables are ended does not affect the result of operation. Again I am repeating the order in which the variables are ended does not change the outcome. That means a dot b is equal to b dot a and to understand this here we have AND gate so let's say a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 so 0 into 1 gives us 0 and now let's change b dot a so when b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 0 the result will still remains the same 0 another commutative law is a plus b is equal to b plus a this means that the order in which the variables are odd does not affect the result. So a plus b will be same as b plus a and to understand this we have OR gate. Let's say a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. So 1 plus 0 gives us 1. If we do 0 plus 1 that still gives us 1. So this is the commutative law. The next is associative law. This law in Boolean algebra pertains to the grouping of variables into the expression. This law is instrumental in simplifying Boolean expression and optimization of digital circuit. Now let's see this law first. This law states that the result of ending of several variables 
will be the same regardless of how the variables are grouped. To understand this, let's have this circuit. So here we have two and get. First we are doing a dot b and it is the result of a dot b, this one. And then we are multiplying it with c, this one. So this circuit is representation of LHS, this one. And this one is the truth table. And the next this circuit is the representation of RHS. Here we have end operation of b dot c and the result of this b dot c will be multiplied with a. So this circuit is representation of RHS. Now let's compare the output of both the circuit. Let's say a case where a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0 and c is equal to 1. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0 and c is equal to 1. So 1 into 0 gives us 0 and 0 into 1 gives us 0. So in LHS the output is 0. Now let's go for the RHS side circuit. 0 into 1 gives us 0 and 0 into 1 gives us 0. So in both the case output is same. Now let's alter the input. A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0. A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0. So 0 into 1 gives us 0, 0 into 0 gives us 0. In this circuit, 1 into 0 gives us 0 and 0 into 0 gives us 0. So in both the case, output is same. So that proves that the result of ending of several variables will be the same regardless of however the variables are grouped. Now let's see another associative law and this law states that the outcome of ORing operation of multiple variables remains same irrespective of its grouping. And to understand this, we have these two circuits. A plus B plus C will be represented by this circuit, A plus B, and then we are adding C. And A plus B plus C is represented by this circuit. B plus C is added with A. Now let's take an example. Let's say A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, and C is equal to 0. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 0. So now here 1 plus 0 gives us 1, 1 plus 0 gives us 1 in output. So the output of first circuit is 1. Now let's see here, 0 plus 0 gives us 0 and this 0 plus 1 gives us 1 in output. So the output of both the circuit is same. Let's take another example, A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 1. A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 1. So 0 plus 0 gives us 0 and this 0 plus 1 gives us 1. In another circuit, this 0 plus 1 gives us 1 and this 1 plus 0 gives us 1. Still output is same in both the circuit. This proves that the outcomes of ORing operation of multiple variable will remain same irrespective of its grouping. And now let's jump to the next law and that is distributive law. The distributive law in Boolean algebra is very important and this will help in circuit reduction. And to prove this law, first of all, we will we'll implement logical circuit equivalent to this LHS. And that circuit is this B C. So this will give us B plus C. This is our A. So A into B plus C. This will give us the output of the circuit. Now here we have logic gate for OR operation and AND operation. And now we'll draw the circuit for right hand side. The circuit is this. It is our A, B, A, C. So this will give us A dot B and this will give us A dot C. And finally we have the addition of A dot B plus A dot C. So now let's take an example. We will take A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 1. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 1. Here A is equal to 1. So 0 plus 1 gives us 1, 1 plus 1 gives us 1. Here 1 into 0 gives us 0. And here 1 into 1 gives us 1. So 0 plus this 1 gives us 1. Again the output is same. So that's how we can say that the LHS is equal to RHS and this is the distributive law in digital electronics. And now we'll see another distributive law. Here we have multiple variables. The equivalent circuit to LHS is this one. Here it is. And the equivalent circuit to RHS is this one. It's our A, B, C, D. 
it's a dot b and it is c plus d and it is the outcome a dot b dot c plus d it is a b c a b d so this is a b c a b d and it is the outcome of addition of a b c a b d now let's take a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 c is equal to 0 d is equal to 1 a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 c is equal to 0 d is equal to 1 so 1 into 1 gives us 1, 0 plus 1 gives us 1, 1 plus 1 gives us 1. Now here we have 3 input AND gate, 1 into 1 into 0 gives us 0. And here we have another 3 input AND gate, 1 into 1 into 1 gives us 1. Now 1 plus 1 gives us 1. So the output in both the cases is same. Hence it proves that LHS is equal to RHS and this is another distributive law. The next law is absorption law and to prove this we have this circuit and we can even simplify this equation like a into a plus a into b. Now previously we have seen that a into a gives us a plus a into b. Now if we take a common then it becomes 1 plus b. So previously in dominance law we have seen that 1 plus b is equal to 1. Over there we have seen 1 plus a is equal to 1. So here we can write a into 1. And this a into 1 becomes identity law. a into 1 is equal to a. So we can say that a into a plus b gives us a. So let's say this is our b, it is our a and they both are connected like this. So it is also our a. So this will give us a plus b and a plus b into a. So now let's say b is equal to 0, a is equal to 1. So 0 plus 1 gives us 1. This a is also 1. So 1 into 1 gives us 1. Now let's say a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. In this case 1 plus 0 gives us 1. This a is 0. So 1 into 0 gives us 0. So our output is same as a. So we can say that a dot a plus b gives us a. The next absorption law is a plus a dot b gives us a and to understand this we have this circuit now let's simplify this circuit a plus a dot b if we take a common then we can have 1 plus b this 1 plus b will result into 1 so this a into 1 will result into a which is this one now let's prove this thing it is b a they both are connected it is our a so let's say b is equal to 0, a is equal to 1, so this a is also equal to 1. So 0 into 1 gives us 0 and 0 plus 1 gives us 1. So the output is same as a. Now let's take b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 0, this case. So this 1 into 0 gives us 0 over here, but a is equal to 0, so we have 0 over here. Now this 0 plus this 0 will get 0 in output. That means again we are getting a as our output. So this is how we can prove another absorption law. So these are the 9 laws of Boolean algebra in digital electronics. At beginning I have told you that there is one more important law and that is De Morgan's theorem. And that De Morgan's theorem we are going to study into the next video. And to jump to that video just click on this link. So see you into that video.